What's up guys? I hope you're doing well. Welcome back to another video. Welcome back to my Porsche 911 901.2 Turbo S. We are in Geneva and we're actually going to Porsche Geneva, which is where I bought this car because today they are lending us a Taycan Turbo S. So I've never driven, never been in a Taycan before. And so I'm very excited because it is the complete opposite of this car, basically. It's a four-door or five-door, technically, uh, fully electric car. This is the two-door, kind of most powerful uh, 911 they've got. So, yeah, I'm super excited to um, to be going there to, to test the car. So we're just going to have a little short drive over and then into a Taycan. Look at this. It's basically electric, this car, isn't it? With the start-stop. Engines off, complete silence. No, but it's really cool. This um, I'm getting more and more used to driving it around. The Apple CarPlay is so useful. Only eight minutes to go, having your ways up on the screen, and I'm used to driving um, the Panamera on on these roads. It's so much bigger, and this feels so compact, so small. So yeah, I'm really enjoying using this as a complete daily, which is basically what we're doing. But how do you feel about start stop? I can switch it off here. I know it mixed opinions on that. I'm not sure. It depends. And when you're in a lot of traffic, it can get a little bit annoying. But anyways, electric, I guess, will be the answer. Let's see what that is like. Look at this. SLS fab design. Wow. What I'm really intrigued in seeing is whether they've managed to keep that like Porsche character in the Taycan. Because I know it's I know it's pretty. I know it's incredibly fast. I mean, there's no doubt on that. All the figures, all the reviews I've watched. You know, I'm not going to be here to tell you yet again how quick a Taycan is. We all know that doesn't have that Porsche character. Um, how does it feel compared to a Tesla? Because I've been lucky enough to drive Teslas. Those are kind of the questions I'm more interested in in kind of solving or seeing today. So yeah, because I've kind of gotten to really love that, that Porsche character. If you've ever driven a Porsche, you know what I'm talking about. It's really particular, but they've just got something special. And have they managed to keep that with the car being fully electric? That's what I want to know. Here we are, Porsche Center Geneva. You know, fun fact, this is, I think, the biggest Porsche center in the world or in Europe. One or the other, but it's, it's very big. It continues all the way over there and many floors down. And there is a Mercedes going in. Okay, we're just looking around and there's this crazy Taycan here. We're waiting to see uh, which one we're getting, but this is nuts. I thought I'd gone crazy on the R8, but these guys went all out. I'm sure there's a reason behind it. I'm sure there's some sort of a theme, but very cool. There's a beautiful blue one here. I love this color. I think it suits the Taycan so well with the, these rims with kind of the silver outer edge of the rims. Very nice. And a Targa, which looks awesome. I love, I just love the design of the Targas. I think they, they look so, so good. 992 in British Racing Green. I also really like these exhausts. Can someone put in the comments down below? Because I know you can get the four exhausts. I think the double exhaust is a sports exhaust but these ones with like the little outlets coming like that is that another exhaust on top of those two that I just named or is it just the standard one because I'm not entirely sure I'm gonna ask but if you know put in the comments because then you can get these two that which I thought were a sports exhaust on the Carrera 4 and then a beautiful speedster look at this with the 918 seats so so sick yeah I love these things manual gearbox as well look boom Manual, it's got the little Porsche 70th, 70th anniversary logo. Very nice. You approve? You like them? Yes. Yes. All of them. <laughs> yes. They look awesome. Okay, so this is classic. We pick up the car in the garage, so I figured let's find somewhere nicer to go film. We get somewhere slightly nicer, and it starts raining. Sick. But anyways, we've got the Taycan Turbo, which is lovely. It looks pretty cool, right? It looks so sick. I think this is one of the best looking four-door kind of cars in the world to be honest i think they've really really done well with the design they've managed to keep that kind of 911 line on the back of the car this one's got the tinted windows and it's in a beautiful i think it's the exact same paint as uh, on my turbo um so it looks oh look it's snowing it's starting to snow that's pretty cool anyways this is the taycan turbo so it's not a turbo s but it's a uh a turbo it looks really cool i love how they've included the porsche logo in the rear light here really nice touch the taycan turbo written in black but you've already seen loads of photos of these we don't have the really nice looking rims because it's still on winter tires which i'm glad it is because it started snowing so that's good news uh, but the summer tires are the ones which look really cool so let's check out let's look around the car so first things first we've got this this rear boot which if I give you the camera we can do the official test this is a well-known official test can I fit in the boot absolutely yeah. no problem super easy so we've got a big boot round back and then the 
cool thing with these electric cars, you have the same in the Teslas, is that you can then go around front and you've got a front boot as well, which is about the same size as the boot in the 911. So overall, between the two boots and the rear seats, you've got loads and loads of space. You can also see the adaptive cruise control radars around front here. Um, so yeah, really, really cool. And then you've got these rear seats, which Marion, would you like to give us a demonstration of the, of the space? You can hop in, look, loads of knee space in front, plenty of headroom, and a huge panoramic sunroof for anyone that feels slightly claustrophobic. If you feel like it, you can also put this down, two little cup holders, ski trap, or if you're feeling even more wild and you've got loads of stuff, easy as that, you just whack the seats down and you've got access to the, to the boot. So then you've got loads of space, so really practical. And the feeling of quality in the leather is definitely, you know, that Porsche feeling. So if we hop around front, this is where things start to get really, really interesting. First of all, this one's got that Burmeister sound system, which I have in, in my turbo, which I talk about all the time, you guys will know. And then you get into this really, really nice cabin, which is just surrounded in digital screens. So the feeling in here, you know, the first thing we were talking about is that character, that feeling, have they managed to retain that? At least on the interior and the quality of all the materials, Absolutely. It feels, I mean, this is a proper, proper Porsche. The quality feels outrageous. It's, uh, yeah, nothing to say there. You know, you've got the Alcantara headlining. Uh, all of the leather is top quality. And uh, it's just a very familiar feeling interior. The steering wheel, all of that stuff. So the only thing which really changes is it's fully digital. Because in the 992s, even they still still kept the rev counter analog, but in this car, everything is digital. Now, the upside of that is you can really choose what you want to have. So look, I can basically select with this button here, I can select whether I want to control the middle bit, the right bit, or the left bit. And by doing that, I can then go through all sorts of different, um, different menus. So assistance stuff, so that gives me my speeds, or I can go here and I can select uh, navigation, sport chrono, driving mode, and it will tell me all of the information that I want to see. So yeah, it is really cool because you can really put it. So I like having that big map in the middle. So look, you can do anything as simple as just choosing how much of the zoom level you want, if you want it 3D, etc. So really nice finish. I can have it just as a more traditional kind of speedo right there. So that's really nice. That we've kind of seen before but what's nice is they've also added these like touch buttons right here so for example for the lift system you just press that and the car's lifting up you can feel it right and then when you press it again down we go and so that's really practical i mean the car's really not very low to start with so you don't really need that but it's nice to have anyways and we've then got this system down here which we're kind of getting used to seeing in the volkswagen group i guess because you know audi um, how do you have this in the R6, the Urus has this, and now you see it here with the Porsche, it's having all of your uh, climate control and battery, yeah, if you press on that button right there, your battery information as well. So you can see we've got 86% charge, that should give us around 342 kilometers. So the range is really good, I mean, you know, the, the main competitor, this guy is of course Tesla, and with that latest car coming out, you know, that has a bit more power and stuff, but the, the range of this is fantastic. It's chargeable pretty easily. There's a lot of chargers that you can find around, so that works really well. Here you have all of your information, um, your climate control, your heated seat, your ventilated seat. It's got all of the creature comforts you could dream of, and most of that is controlled around here until you press on, for example, the menu button, and then we switch up to that screen here, which is the main screen. So you can control uh, all sorts of different information um, which you can't access down here. So this is kind of, if you want to go deeper, dive deeper into the info. But it's such a, it's kind of easy to get used to system and it's so responsive, they've just done it really well. Uh, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a really good system. So this middle screen is to control everything, basically, um, as you would have on a normal car. So you can do all of your settings, you can access your Apple CarPlay, uh, you can even control anything from the more intricate intricate systems in the car. So your driving modes, your chassis control, um, your lift system, and for example, your sports sound. So you can put that on so that when you accelerate, it gives you a sound which will give you more of a sensation of speed. So this is kind of the classic screen and it works really well. Right in front of that, right on the left of that, so you can see your uh, gear selector. So that's a kind of a new system, but very similar to what was on the 918, which is kind of cool. Sport Chrono up there, which you get with the turbos, really cool. 
you know, standard classic Porsche, you know, to tradition there. But you have this passenger display screen, which is very cool. Definitely a gadget. I mean, you don't need this, but it is very, very nice because it's not that far to the main screen. But here, your passenger can control your media. So change the song, put the volume up and down, see the navigation. So you can have the navigation up in front of you. So if you really want to see where you are and the quality of that, as I was saying, is pretty nuts. Um, so that's really nice. And you can even get cockpit view and get all sorts of info like the g-forces your speed all of that stuff so this was first pioneered i think by ferrari this system but now it's ended up on on these sorts of cars you can even get your weather but this always takes ages to load up and it's going to be pretty depressing if we look at it i think so <laughs> let's let's not do that but really cool and it kind of gives you it's really impressive you don't see it too much it doesn't come off on camera well but when you're sat in the car and you just have this wall of screens in front of you it's really cool and at night time it must look so so sick so really nice i think they really succeeded on the interior and we're kind of improvising we've got this car for most of the day today and um i just kind of wanted to bring you along and improvise so we're going to learn how all these systems work and now i think it's probably time to get driving because we've got over 600 horsepower and i want to see if it has kept as i say that porsche character so so far it feels very porsche it feels very familiar but uh let's get driving and we'll see what it's really like well the turning circle is pretty incredible <laughs> That's one, one, one good thing. Okay, so we are in normal mode driving this. We obviously have access to 600 plus horsepower, which we'll use in a little bit. Just to get here, I've driven it uh, a bit, and uh, it's incredible how the car feels smaller than it really is, especially in normal mode. Uh, it feels a lot smaller than, let's say, the Panamera, uh, because it, even though it isn't, just because of this, all this new technology and the steering is so light, I can do it with one, one finger really feels like you know a proper luxury car because it's so quiet you've got the double glazing double glazing i think that's how you say it. the double glazing on the windows um which is unbelievable so it's super silent obviously the lack of engine noise but then you can whack it into sport sport plus oh, we've got someone in front of us so i'm not going to be able to accelerate but as soon as you put in sport plus you get that sport noise which i'm not sure how i feel about that it's cool because you, you get a little noise but it's I don't know it's not quite the same as you would have in a normal car and you definitely yeah miss that traditional Porsche flat six sound and you know you do think of it as much as it is cool having the Tron like sound behind you and you know a sound from the future I do miss the, the normal car sound but the electric technology is so cool and it's got its plus size as well like the instant torque that we're going to experience in a bit so now that i am in sport plus also it's worth noting that the steering has really tightened up um so it feels a lot more porsche like because when you're in normal mode the steering's so light that you that you kind of forget that you're in such a sporty car because of the light steering now you can feel a lot more it's communicating what's going on um, in the road a lot more um, and so you yeah you feel a lot more like you're in a slightly more traditional Porsche and sport mode is obviously the, the balance between that so it's kind of the middle ground uh, and then you do have individual and you've also got a mode which is called range where it'll set the car up so that you can get the, sh the longest range so it'll put the aircon on you know the best setting to get to the temperature you want and hold it there um, and it'll just kind of allow you to pull the maximum out of the battery obviously the more you do pulls in sport plus the more you're going to bite away at your battery range but yeah i mean it feels like they've walked the line of using this new technology and having a car from the future whilst keeping a certain level of um you know the old school classic porsche stuff that we're quite familiar with so it allows you to kind of be in the future whilst it doesn't feel completely unfamiliar so the reason i say that is for example in tesla because tesla is a completely new brand everything feels new so from the you know interior to the way it drives everything feels completely brand new whereas here certain amount of it feels familiar certain amount of it feels brand new are you holding on no are you ready because not really oh, oh my god, god the acceleration the acceleration is not, i had heard stories but like if we stop now right. then three two one <laughs> God, it's nuts. Over 600 horsepower and instant torque, four wheel drive to just whack the power down. 
Whoa, that, that just could not get old. That's one of those fun little things that you could just keep doing all day. Whack in sport mode, do a pull, see the reactions because, oh my God, it is nuts. Right, most of the people are gonna drive this car in town. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna head back into the city in normal mode, see how it fares there because that's where it makes a lot of its sense because on country roads like this, whilst it does feel good while you know there's not much body roll, the car does make a little noise and the acceleration's nuts. Where most people will be driving it is in town and the reason you would buy a full electric car is also a lot for that. So we're gonna go into town, see what it feels like, but so far, as I say, it's walking that line, walking that balance, to me at least, really well between feeling like you're in a Porsche, you've got kind of that character, you've got that steering feel a little bit, you know, that you get used to, whilst also having the benefits of the electric. So, it feels pretty good to me. I'm really enjoying this. Let's head into town. Guys, you joined me a couple of hours later. I just had to have a quick stop off at uh, the hospital for my voice because I just needed to go see some doctors real quick. But look at this. We're in a car park and the... Uh, the screens are so much more impressive here. So I imagine at nighttime, that must be even crazier than during the day. But anyways, part of testing it in the city is doing stuff like going in the car parks. And it is quite a big car, but first of all, there's no noise. And it's also very maneuverable in here. So that's the first step, which has worked very well. The weird thing though, is people don't really hear you coming. So you need to be a little bit careful in a car park like this, that people actually know that there is a car on the way. Where am I going? Okay, into the city now here we go okay i had to focus on the road but i just drove by all of that construction right there and the car when you get in town you do start feeling the size a little bit i'm not gonna lie but it feels really good actually still in town you, it, it does feel quite big but the fact that it's so quiet you feel like so you just feel, just feel respectful driving around town people smile at you in this because it's a good looking electric car um you don't make any noise the suspension's pretty compliant it's not very low uh, so overall i mean it is pretty good the one thing which is also awesome is the uh, double glazing on the windows because uh, the, the noise that it cancels out is unbelievable as soon as you open the windows you hear kind of all the hustle and bustle around town but as soon as you have the windows closed there's no engine noise nothing it's just a really relaxing really relaxing drive guys what the hell is that thing she's driving on the on the like crosswalk on the what on the pedestrian crossing? You said it looks like a bin. <laughs> it does kind of look like a bin. I want to see it move. Look, 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 look. Look, she's on the sidewalk. What the hell? I mean, maybe it's for if you have trouble walking or something like that. Um, maybe, yeah, maybe it's for elderly people um, or if you just have trouble walking, which amazing. I think that is so cool if that is the case because uh, it looks kind of fun and it must be such an easy way to get around town. So very cool. I just wasn't expecting to see that at all. I should get my grandma one of those. <laughs> imagine, <laughs> imagine my grandma balling around in one of those. Well, all good things come to an end, don't they? So we're gonna have to give this car back. I was just checking, we've been driving around all day and look at this here, down here on the screen, 68%, 271 kilometers left, but we've got 68% left. I think we started with 86. You guys will know better than, than, than I will because you just saw it in the video. That's not bad. And we've driven it around basically all day since we picked it up at 11 a.m. So really not bad at all. If you're going to just be taking this uh, to and from work, just need to charge it up once a week. The big question is, would, uh, would I have this over a Tesla? Uh, honestly, uh, probably. Yeah, I, I'm a huge fan of Tesla, but I really like this. I have completely, we were talking about this in Malibu earlier, I've completely got in the Porsche bug since I bought the Turbo. And, being able to, if you just have like that Porsche smell and that slight Porsche feel, as I say, I feel, feel like they've walked that line quite well, that balance between having the, you know, new um, electric car, but whilst retaining as much as they could, the, the Porsche aura of the car. So yeah, I, obviously, you know, I know now that I, we're gonna go back, get back into the 911, the character is completely different and there is definitely something missing. It's you know everything you would dream it to be so it's super efficient it's super fast it's very practical it's very good looking everything you imagine this car to be it is and likewise you imagine it probably has a bit less character than the other Porsches it does but it's still a fantastic car I still think they're pretty expensive so comparing it to for example the Tesla um, the price is, is pretty different so I still think that you know they're expensive especially if you're going new second hand there are some interesting 
um, interesting deals coming up. This one, for example, at Porsche Geneva is going to be for sale um, as of May. I think this one's going up for sale, so contact Porsche Geneva if you're interested. But I think maybe in a year or two, you know, uh, when the, the main depreciation will have come down, there'll be a really interesting offer. If you've got a ton of money and you're looking for just, you know, the perfect kind of family car and you want something electric, I mean, this is pretty bang on. Uh, and, and you don't care about depreciation, the then I would just go get one now. Um, but it, like most people, if you do care about depreciation, I think maybe waiting a little bit may be the wise thing to do because the product is really good, slightly ahead of its time, like you see with Teslas. So it'll still be relevant technology in a year or two, and then it'll be interesting and you won't be hit by the depreciation as much, and you'll have the low running cost. So you could get into one of these, keep it for not too long and get out really at a reasonable cost. I think that's the sweet spot of this car once the major depreciation is gone, but the product itself is fantastic. And as I say, it's everything you would want it to be. So that being said, we are now gonna go back, get the 911, but also there may be one or two cars in the dealership that could be interesting. So I uh, might show you around there. I don't know if they'll let us film, but hopefully. So we'll see you there. Okay, guys, look at this. Look at the beauty we've got here. Absolutely stunning. So we just dropped the Taycan off and my car's been all nice and cleaned up by the guys here at Porsche Geneva. And this looks so, look at that. How classy is that having straps here? But uh, yeah, I mean, these are obviously uh, certain value to them, just under 400,000 for this, but well worth it. This is one of my all time favorites. Three, five, sixes are absolutely gorgeous. Um, look at this one. The steering wheel on this, these old kind of wooden steering wheels, absolutely gorgeous. So cool when you come out of the car from the future to come in here to the classic part of the showroom here to see the cars from the past. Right, last little stop before getting back into the, uh, the 911. Carrera GT right here, you guys know this. Race car engine at the back. V10, naturally aspirated. Manual gearbox, really cool. The showroom here is so sick. There's loads of fun little uh, kind of things that to look at. Like here you've got a body panel, a leftover body panel just hung up on the wall. And these logos, Shows you the evolution of the Porsche logo over the years, which is quite cool. It started all small, and then, yeah, it just kind of changed to where, for example, the Porsche writing on the top wasn't outlined, and then now it's outlined in black. Little details like that. Really cool to see. But anyways, cool to look around the, um, the showroom here, and now time to go get back in the Turbo S. Back in the Turbo S now, we're just uh, at a traffic light, but um, it's crazy how getting back into this, it suddenly feels kind of so old school, so analog. Whereas usually when I get into this, I was comparing it to the Scud. So it felt so modern, so kind of tamed, which is what I wanted it to be. But the Taycan just takes that to a whole new level. And uh, but I mean, they're two different cars looking to do different things. This and the Taycan, so you can't really compare. But um, I do really like this. Getting back into it does feel good. It feels small. It feels like you can chuck it around. And uh, it's also just a completely different um, uh, power delivery. And the brake pedal feels really different because you don't have that that electric side to the to, to, to the brakes and the regenerative brake, braking. So it feels really good back in this. I'm very happy and I did love the Taycan. I think it's a great car. It does what it has to do fantastically. So huge thank you to Porsche Geneva. Uh, it's so, so nice as always. And I'm going to put all the links down below. So if you guys want to go follow them, that would be lovely. And uh, as for me, I'll see you again very soon. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you aren't already. And we'll be back with plenty more videos with this car and many more soon. Cheers.